So this is the example that we were, I was talking about that I will avoid and I will indeed avoid it. Let's just find out the power. It's using your simple power formula, add things together. It's just that easy. Now we get on to uh, efficiency, okay? So motors are rated in horsepower and this is really important for you to note because you have to memorize how many watts per horsepower. This magical number of 746, you gotta memorize that, okay? Because I promise you, somewhere along the line, you will have to know this. And whether by random chance it's you have to know this in first year or second year, don't know, but you will definitely have to know it in third year. So just memorize it. Um, the horsepower of a motor, and this is also vital for you to know, is the output. So when we are getting to efficiency and we talk about outputs and inputs, the horsepower rating of a motor is the output, okay? Make sure you know that. Going back to electrical energy management, power is the rate at which energy is used. Electrical energy is commercially sold in units called kilowatt hours. This is going to be our energy over time. Okay. Or energy is equal to power multiplied by time. See how we're just transposing that formula? from previous lecture, and this is how they charge you, okay? <laughs> In other words, energy is the power applied over a period of time and is what you buy from power companies. Well, technically what you buy is a lot of distribution, right? If you look at your power bill and you use like 11 kilowatts, not even that, that's like huge. You use a tiny amount, right? 0.1. I pay for administration fees too. <laughs> I, I spend like maybe $4 on electricity, actual electricity and power. Uh, but I pay $60 in administration and distribution fees. Distribution fees. <laughs> this is why I want to put some solar on my house because it's retarded. So we've got energy is joules per second um, multiplied by time. Watts, remember, is joules per second. And remember that one kilowatt is equal to 1000 watts. Those are all gonna be key points in figuring out kilowatt hours um, and what they're going to charge you. Okay, make sense? Any questions so far? Good. So, so by definition, a kilowatt hour is a unit of measurement for electrical energy. And when we wanna convert kilowatt hours to megajoules, we're going to take our kilowatt hour um, number and recognize that it is equaling one kilojoule per second multiplied by an hour, all right? One uh, or one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. So in essence, what we find is one kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 megajoules. Okay. That's how that formula shakes down. When it comes to uh, some examples, we've got a 120 volt 10 amp heater that's operating at three hours. What does it cost to operate the heater? Oh, it did it again. I've already fixed this thing once. Let's, uh, give me one second. Okay, 
What does it cost to operate the heater at a cost of, what's that cost? That's 6.4 cents. Thanks, Hunter. Just making sure you guys are awake, like paying attention to what the digits are. <laughs> Six, thanks. Yeah, 6.4 cents. Um, so then per kilowatt hour, we've got five 60 watt and four 100 watt lamps for five hours. So what, what's this gonna be, okay? So we take our volts and our current, 120 times 10, we get a power rating of 1200 watts or 1 1.2 kilowatts. We're gonna multiply that by our hours. So 1.2 kilowatts times three times our pennies. And we get a cost of 23 cents. Okay. In the second example, if we have five 60 watt and four 100 watt lamps and they burn daily for five hours, what is that going to cost? So you take your five times 60 is 300 watts, four times 100 is 400 watts, we find our total power by just adding those together at 700 watts or 0.7 kilowatts. Remember, knowing our units is important when we're working with these formulas. And then we plug it into that previous formula of 0.7 kilowatts times five hours per day times 30 days. Why did I get 230, not 23? Like I got $2.30. Yeah, so that's because you forgot, uh, It's a, that's a decimal error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you either didn't do 1.2 kilowatts or you forgot to add a zero in front of the point zero six four. No, I, I did 3,600 watts times point zero six four. Where did you get 3,600 from? 1,200 times three. Okay. And you times that point by point zero six four? Yes. So that's why you have the decimal that's off. You gotta go three point six three because your measurement has to be in kilowatts it can't be in watts oh that's that calculation good. yeah okay yeah so then if we have going back to that second example if we have a hundred and five kilowatt hours And we multiply that by our, our pennies again. Yeah, we get $5.88 to operate those lamps for five hours per day for 30 days. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to power losses. And this is gonna lead us up to efficiency. So power losses are um, those I squared R losses. And the reason why is because the, uh, the conductors that we use are going to, and the motors that we use, are gonna dissipate energy in the form of heat. And for us, that is 
just a loss. We don't want that heat, okay? The formula then is going to be I squared R, or we call them I squared R losses. So if the question asks you, what is the I squared R loss of this circuit? It's asking you for these power losses, okay? Then the current in the conductors feeding the motor, we will call line loss and bearing friction or iron losses due to magnetism will be other losses. So you see how we have three different types of losses in the form of heat, depending on what part of the circuit that we're talking about. So if we say that we've got I squared R losses, we're really, when we get to the specifics of it, are referring to the copper motor windings. When we say we have line loss, that's gonna be the conductors feeding the circuit. And then the bearing friction and all sorts of other types of losses that we can have or develop due to heat would just be other losses. Why that's important is because when we get to efficiency, it's going to be our output over our input. We wanna see the effect of the losses on the circuit and we wanna see, well, are we at 97% efficient or are we at 50% efficient? Because we're, if we're at 50% efficient on the circuit, we need to change some things in a bad way. That is not good. Right, um, And you will learn in subsequent years how to, to correct for some of those losses as well. But for the basics, efficiency is going to be our power output over our power input multiplied by 100. You can also think of this formula, and we'll have it in later slides, as power output over power output plus the losses right? Which would essentially equal your power input in the end. So here's an example. A motor has a rating of three horsepower and draws 10 amps at 240 volts. What is the efficiency of this motor? What's the first step that we got to do? Yeah, get it into watts. Okay. Okay, then once we have that um, power output, we can calculate the power input, which will be our 10 amps at 240 volts. That gives us a power input of 2,400 watts. When it comes to then finding out the efficiency of this circuit or of this motor, we say efficiency is our power output over our power input multiplied by 100 or 2238 divided by 24. And we find that this circuit is 93.25% efficient. Does that make sense? how to get efficiency. All right. Another example. If a DC motor operating at 4.2 amps across 120 delivers 0.5 horsepower, what is the efficiency of the motor? I'll give you two minutes to try and solve this one. 504. Yep, so we found our output at 373. And then we found our input at 504. And then what? Yeah, then you divide them and multiply by 100. So laid out, these are the steps that you took. So essentially what this means is that 26% of the energy used by this motor was converted to heat. Yeah, that sucks. That's, we're not getting that back. Yeah, exactly. Right? 
<laughs> and crank irrigation. Yeah. You are the hamster in that wheel. Um, you can see at the bottom that I've transposed the formula for you. If you were given efficiency to be able to find your power output. Okay, so this is just transposing that formula. All right, let's do another example. So if we have three horsepower motor has a resistance of 1.5 ohms and is fed with two conductors, each having 0.05 ohms. Other motor losses are 250 mm -hmm. watts and the circuit has 10 amps flowing through it. What is the efficiency of this circuit? Okay, here are the steps. You find your power output. Three horsepower times 200 or sorry, 746 watts gives you 2,238 watts. Then you find your IR losses, or your line losses, sorry. You go P is equal to I squared R, 10 amps squared times 0 0.05. But remember, we have two conductors multiplied by two. That is 10 watts. Then you have your copper losses, okay? Current multiplied by resistance again. And your other losses. For a total loss of what? 410. What you then do is you take your power output of 2,238 and you divide it by that power output plus your losses, which would equal your input, right? Then you multiply that by 100, and that gives you 84.5%. All right? And that is how you find efficiency with these circuits. Any questions on efficiency? Yes, at least three. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, now we can quickly talk about volt drop. So volt drop is, and we've gone over this before uh, in other scenarios. I'm just going to clarify some things here. Ohm's law says the sum of individual voltages is equal to uh, the applied voltage. So if we consider that a one amp lamp load on a 120 volt circuit with each line having a resistance of 500 milliohms, what will, uh, what voltage will be at the load? What we have to do is subtract the volt drops that are going to exist across each one of those lines. All right, so we've got 0.5 ohms on each line. And we know that we have one amp flowing through that line because the load is in series with the conductors that feed it, right? So then we find out the volt drop across each one of those lines. And if they have the same resistive value, we can just multiply it by two. And so we find a total volt drop across the line of one volt. We minus that from our supply voltage, and that will be the volt drop across the load. Okay. And this is sometimes what it feels like when we're doing these volt drop calculations. Just making the hole bigger. So we've got our volt drop, and that is equal to I times R. We also call this line drop. Don't confuse that with line loss, because some questions will ask you, what is the line drop for this um, resistor or this load? And you have to make sure that you are not calculating line loss. OK? 
okay? Um, it is measured in volts, and indeed does depend on the resistance of line and current flowing through it. We've just covered line loss, so I won't go into too much depth, but if we consider that previous example with the five, mo five ohm resistance per line, um, then we can actually calculate the line loss and we can use our I squared R formula to do so, okay? So we have four watts total of line loss or two watts per line. And these losses are going to be in the form of heat. To sum up, line loss and line drop. Here's a nice little chart for you. One is measured in volts affects the load voltage and is undesirable. One is, the other is measured in watts, affects the efficiency of the circuit and is also undesirable. Any questions regarding line loss or line drop? 